Hey, how's it going? Today we are going to play some games with Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt got like 6th place at the World Championships and just generally did pretty good. A lot of people made day 2 with it and the aggressive decks are in a pretty good spot right now. They are decent into Reggie Drago and yeah, just all around fun to play I think. Raging Bolt is one of the better ones because of its high HP and it can pretty consistently hit like 280 going 2nd. Um, yeah, it's a pretty solid deck. I have the unfair stamp to try and disrupt our bad matchups like Charizard and Gardevoir. It can also help against other aggressive decks. And I have the four Pokemon Catcher and the Iron Bundle with the three Rescue Stretcher to kind of make up for the no Prime Catcher so you can get things out of the active pretty consistently and hopefully flip a Catcher Heads if we need to knock out whatever we want. Um, since there are three stretcher, I also only have three bull and three ogre pond. Would really like a fourth ogre pond. I haven't had a problem with only the three bolt so far, but a heavy ball wouldn't be the worst thing in the world either. Maybe the ultra ball could just become heavy ball, but I do kind of like having the ultra ball. And realistically in best two of three, you can finish three games pretty easily with raging bolt and the odds of prizing two Raging Bolt or two Ogre Pond two games in a row is relatively low so yeah I also made a more in-depth video on how to play Raging Bolt so check that out and uh yeah let's get into the games all right so game one pretty sure I won the coin flip here and chose to go second we're up against a Manaphy so it could really be anything but it does end up being Gardevoir which isn't the best matchup in the world like Gardy can win pretty easily in only three turns it isn't the easiest matchup for them either though the 240 hp on raging bolt can be pretty awkward so that can stop them from just taking three prizes or three knockouts super easily like normally they have to target down a uh an ogre pond at some point or something like that i have kind of an awkward starting hand here i'm really relying on my teal dance to get me into like a raging bull or nest ball or something it does get me into trekking shoes which is good i just check to see if anything's in the discard pile i could grab a stretcher which it's not i should know that but i have no faith in my own memory and i do get into nest ball so that's kind of perfect i can i switch cart into the raging bull but i probably could have just hard retreated the ogre pawn I wanted to keep both energy attached to the Raging Bolt because I didn't pull another like Lightning or Fighting into my hand because I wanted to have three Grass energy in my hand for the Ogre Pond in case I just had to attach another energy to it and pass so that I could attack with it next turn or just to have more Grass to keep chaining Ogre Ponds. But the reason to keep the Switch Cards around this matchup is because they might end up hitting with Monkey Dory to try to buy an extra turn. So the switch cards are you know really good to heal a little bit of damage and also to get out of the confusion without having to retreat three energy up so maybe um just retreating would have been better off i flipped the catcher heads first there to know if i can ultra ball away my other catcher because like i was just saying i really want to keep the uh switch card in my hand energy retrieval is also a good resource and with a bunch of ionos probably coming later in the game keeping sadas around is going to be nice as well and then I just solder two grass and those are going to be the energy that I discard with this attack because they are kind of useless on my raging bolts. I could have kept the one grass on the bench one and discarded the grass off the ogre pond just in case like some boss stall counter catcher stall kind of plays came up. I would be a little bit closer to retreating. So maybe that's a little bit of a mistake. I'm just really trying to focus down the Curlias here, and I'm hoping that they can't one-shot my Raging Bolt so that I can boss up either their other Curlia or their Guardi EX if they do get it out. And this makes me kind of nervous. They get down a Drifloon, but it looks like they have no Bravery Charm, so they're trying to hit me for 180, and then they're going to move like 30 over twice with Monkey Dory to take a passive two prizes and then maybe next turn they would like try to hit into my other raging bolt and just or one shot that or something 
What I'm trying to say is next turn they could counter catch to the bench Raging Bull and one shot it while also moving 30 over to my active to get it up to 210 and then the next turn move another 30 to it, knock it out and knock out like my bench Ogre Pond. But yeah, I don't think we're in that bad of a spot right now. I have enough energies here to one shot the Guardi X, which if I one shot the Guardi, there should be almost no way that I lose the game except for an Iona like sticking me with uh, nothing in my hand. But getting into a pal pad here would be pretty great. I don't know, I'm just thinking here if I, cause I do have to get rid of all my energy to one shot the guard EX, which is kind of sketchy. And I'm not really too crazy about that. I just attach the grass. I don't know, that's kind of debatable if that was correct because the grass energy can draw with Ogre Pond. But my thought kind of was I want to have the other type of energy for a Raging Bolt in deck so that when I saw the next turn, I'll easily be able to get to that type of energy. I don't bench the Raging Bolt. I probably could have just benched it because I already have one on the bench with no energy on it. So that's as much of a liability as the other one. But a little bit further down the road, it could become more of a liability. When I have like these two built up or something like that, I don't know. Probably could have just benched it because they're going to knock this Raging Bolt out. They'd really probably prefer to hit into my other Raging Bolt, I would guess. They're in kind of a weird spot. Now they only have one Curlia down, so my goal is just to flip this Catcher Heads here and uh, knock out their last Curlia, and then I basically can't lose. I was already in almost an unlosable spot by knocking out the EX that turn because it's going to take them more than two turns to win the game and I just need to take two single knockouts and with how many energy I should be able to get on the board I shouldn't be able to whiff the knockout here or whiff like knocking out anything in the active I mean that would like if they bring a guard EX into the active next turn when I'm at one prize I should still be able to knock that out pretty easily and here I'm just kind of drawing as many cards as I can trying to thin out my deck as much as possible I found the pal pad and the unfair stamp, which is nice. I flipped two catcher tails, which is not nice. I'm thinking about either benching the iron bundle or just thinning it out of the deck because all the other cards are cards that I really want to keep. I like I want to keep one vessel around to grab these energies out of the deck and I get kind of lucky here with drawing into this pal pad on the other side of the unfair stamp, which I have pretty decent odds to, but this makes it so that I have much better odds of drawing a Sada off of any Iono because like two or three of the cards in my deck are Sada and I only have 10 cards. So that is kind of nice. And now I think I'm in kind of an unlosable spot. Yeah, I think that they basically realize that they can't, there's no nothing they can do. I'm going to be able to knock out whatever they put in the active and they just concede. All right, I'm up against Lost Box this game. This is another just kind of weird matchup that in theory it's a bad matchup, but the 240 HP of Raging Bolt makes it really awkward for them to knock out any of my guys super easily, like cram into Sableye doesn't knock them out. So it puts them in kind of a weird spot. I just checked to make sure I was recording there because when I play Call of Duty, I have to shut off my recording thing for some reason. And then I'll play games and it's usually always a good game that I play when my thing's off and then I go to capture it and I can't get it. So that always sucks. I Ultra Ball for the Ogre Pond and I want to do that before I rip the Pokey Stop just to try and hit a Vessel. And I vessel away the boss. I really shouldn't have done that because I shouldn't put Squawk Ability in play. There's no real reason to at this point. I can attack and get the knockout. And then I have like a stretcher in my hand for next turn to at least draw another card with Ogre Pond. So I probably should have just vessel away the Squawk Ability. It's a big liability in this matchup. It's a little too easy for them to knock out with like Greninja and Sableye. Of course, that's just assuming that they're playing Greninja. I don't remember if they mulliganed and I saw water energies or if I'm just completely assuming that. But 
I do end up just holding on to the squawk ability and I have no boss now, which is pretty dumb. This is generally a matchup though where I can just knock out whatever's in the active, but having the option to boss is never a bad thing, so that's going to be a mistake. They are playing uh, Luxray, which is a little interesting. That is a cool card. And they are going to hit into me with Cram, it looks like, to set up a two shot with the Luxray, which is fine by me. It is so awkward, this matchup for Lost Box, that they can't like cram into Sableye knockout. And Nest Ball here, I'm just kind of was thinking about whether to get a Raging Bolt or an Ogre Pond. I want to have the option to solder to two Raging Bolts, so I grab one of those. I Pokey Stop first, just see what I get. And because I also would have really liked to mill another energy, but I don't. And I retrieval both of them out, which is, I don't know, fine. I can't solder now, but I can attack, so it all works out. I also keep the switch card off the tracking shoes because healing off a little bit of damage in this matchup is generally a pretty decent thing. I switch cart my Raging Bolt. I was thinking that the math was going to matter for some reason, but it really doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. It makes it so that they definitely have to hit me with the Luxray, but in hindsight, it was kind of a waste and I just wanted to not sit there and think about every single possible combination of uh, like math that they could do forever. So I do just switch cart and they are gonna knock me out anyway. I could have just held the switch cart though because I kind of want them to knock me out. Now I can unfair stamp whenever it's not that big of a deal. I probably should pokey stop first or I have the stretcher so I can get another raging bolt. Never mind, don't need to stop first because that's what I would be looking for. So I just stretcher for the raging bolt. Sada, now I can attach maybe energy retrieval and use the ogre pond first energy retrieval for one isn't really the greatest though i thought about benching the iron bundle but it shouldn't come up too much in this matchup and putting just a little pokemon in play right now would eliminate my options later of putting another one in play because the thing that lost box is going to struggle against the most is just a bunch of high hp pokemon like the Raging Bolts. The Ogre Pond aren't super high HP, but 210 is still a little bit awkward. So just keeping those in play is gonna make it as hard as possible for them to win the game. And I can just get rid of Lightning and Grass so that both of my Raging Bolts just need a Lightning to attack with. I have the Lightning in hand. I'm up against Lost Box. They could Roxanne me at this point, but they're probably gonna keep using Chorus. That's like the most likely outcome is what I'm thinking. They, I do unfair stamp them into Colrus uh, reversal energy, so that's just the way it goes, I guess. I could waste these catchers, but I really um, want to knock out this Luxray. I don't want to just leave them this big attack in play for no reason. And not putting the bundle in play also lets me put the Greninja into play now. Just because now I'm kind of worried about a Roxanne coming next turn. The one, the decks more like this usually play like at least one, but often two Roxanne's, I think. I know the, I could just be completely wrong about that, but I think Sable's already used to play two Roxanne's, and this seems more like that kind of style of Lost Box deck. And I have seen no Greninja yet. I'm just contemplating what to Vessel here, and I probably could have just got rid of the Pokemon Catcher, but I get rid of the Sandy Shocks because I have um i have a couple stretchers left anyway it might just be one at this point but i do have the option to get it back i'm just kind of playing all the cards out of my hand i probably want to get sada and iono just being able to iono them later in the game would always be nice and i kind of have enough energy built in play at this point to not really have to worry about sodding too much i switch cards so they don't just get a free knockout with cramorant i need them or i'm forcing them to find like sableye and psychic energy or counter catcher so they can knock me out with cram because at this point really what they'd like to do is knock out the bench roaring moon and then take the last two prizes with blood moon they can't knock this out with the uh, ursaluna right now because then i just win the game so i think i'm in a pretty decent spot their hand is relatively low but there is always a chance that they win lost box this is how lost box can win these games but just trying my best to lower the odds that they win by as much as possible this is where the Bravery Charms would be pretty nice. But my plan here 
is they're probably gonna say blind my bench guy or counter catch your crammer in it. And uh and then I could Iona them, but they do end up only being able to hit my active with cram. So I don't need to Iono and I just basically win the game at this point. I can just get a ton of energy in play and whatever they put in the active spot is going to get knocked out. I'm like second guessing here whether I should Sada or dig for Iono, but it's just completely fine to Sada here because there's no way that they're knocking out both of my guys next turn. Even if they do like drop a Radiant Greninja and do 90-90, it only knocks out the Bench Raging Bolt. So I'm in a mostly, I think, an unlosable spot. I just discard the Fighting in the Grass to keep both of my Raging Bolts with enough energy to attack. And I want to leave the single energies on my Ogre Ponds to have the chance to retreat them. That still leaves Greninja as like a counter catcher target to like counter catcher Sableye, but that's fine. I'm not really too worried about that. I'll find an energy and I get an energy retrieval off Roxanne anyway, but I just wanted to leave the most Pokemon as possible and play with energy. Because what they would want to do is like stick an Ogre Pond in the active, Sableye, my Bench Roaring Moon, and then next turn knock out the Ogre Pond with the Blood Moon Ursa Luna, so Counter Catcher Greninja would kind of buy me an extra turn. Well, that was uh, Raging Bolt. Hope you all enjoyed. Leave a like or dislike, comment, subscribe, and uh, have a good one.